Liberty Television, where we look at the biggest stories making the rounds right here in Nigeria. And uh, we've got uh, a very, very sound analyst in the studio who is going to help us look at the big stories making the rounds. I've got in the studio presently uh, Issa Aliu Shata. Uh, Issa, nice to have you on the program. The pleasure is always mine. All right, uh, let's look at it. Uh, we've got very exciting stories that uh, we're going to be sharing with you uh, on today's edition. We've got a uh, federal government moves uh, to give Nigerians uh, NIM via uh, BVN. We also have a uh, NASU opposes reopening of uh, tertiary institutions. Uh, we'll be looking at that story. Also, Rep's uh, panel seeks explanation on NNPC's withdrawal of uh, $20.3 billion uh, uh, from the NLNG account. A uh, very disturbing occurrence. They also have a uh, Niger UAE's uh, spot lingers as flight uh, from the UAE is suspended. We also have another big story that Ben APC ward chair killed as violence rocks uh, registration. This and other big stories is uh, what we'll be looking at on today's edition. But we'll kick start with this very big one that says federal government moves uh, to give Nigerians uh, uh, NIN via BVA, a very, very controversial uh, inter-twisting issue there. Uh, let's look at uh, the Federal Ministry of Communications and, and the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, uh, working hard uh, with the Central Bank of Nigeria to ensure that all Nigerians uh, who have BVN are given national identification number. Don't you think there's a overlapping uh, influence here. If we have, if they have the statistics or the d data of those who have BVN, why just not do the conversion without uh, uh, putting Nigerians through this uh, rigorous stress, especially amidst uh, the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, you know, when the issue of, you know, the rush started, when people were, you know, trying to register on this platform, and I, I think um, they really need to give kudos to this program because on this platform we give various solutions sure, yeah. you know to how they can actually integrate these data and ensure that people are giving names mm -hmm. and so i will say to some extent that they are listening to us because i think we mentioned it here once that rather than allowing people to rush out and going head to okay, yeah. why not limit it to those who have bvn so at least you would have created a, a, um, a, um, a shift from having crowd present at the offices by reducing you know, the huge number of people who go there with the people who have BVN to give them their names. So those who don't have names, you separated them, they can now approach you know, these various offices and go for their registration. But the good news again is, it, is that as of yesterday, they've actually licensed uh, about more than 100 centers okay. you know, to carry out you know, this um, registration, registration, which was exactly what we were also talking about, that they should decentralize it. You know, the registration you know, process. And they have done that. You know, we, you know, I, I, we mentioned it here, and you sincerely gave you know, some examples so, so, yeah. to say that they can actually partner with CPAN, you know, and that's the body that is responsible to helping you know, with jam registration, okay. you know, because of the reach they have all over okay. Nigeria, in every local government, in every so state in Nigeria. It so easy. it makes it easier. So you're taking that, you know, directly to the grassroots, which is exactly what they have done. So if we say some things and they listen and they have done it, I think we should give them kudos, kudos okay. that at least they listened and they have done it. So at least in the next, initially we were predicting that with the pace they were going before, in the next one year, we doubt if they are actually going to cover this, you know, um, deficit. But with this new innovation and uh, with this expansion, we hope that in the next three, four months, they should be able to have done something. All right, we still got the story that says uh, in, in three months, uh, Nain had uh, registered the uh, Nigerians. Uh, about three million Nigerians have been registered in three months. Uh, talking about the pace of uh, work done, uh, do you think uh, three, mo uh, three million Nigerians in three months is uh, good enough? Uh, and also the issue of uh, the fact that is it very important for when you already have those who have BVN to still insist on the name? Uh, or do you think there's a political undertone why there's this insistence on name when the BVN is as good as... Uh, because with the BVN you have the data of every Nigerian, the profile of Nigerians, and that's the essence of uh, this exercise, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the reason why they said whoever has uh, BVN, they are going to give you name because already you already have your biometric, you know, um, data. 
that has been captured by the bank. So all they will just do is to integrate you know, those platforms okay, together yeah. to ensure that they can read those data. Yes. And they can also attach, what they will just be attaching to your BVN in the database of what they have is just the main number. The, okay. Yeah, so for me, I think it's the right step in the, in the right the direction. direction. Uh, you are talking about the pace of work in terms yeah. of the three million. Three million in three months. In three, so if you extrapolate that, that is one million per month. month. So it's that's that's too slow, if you ask me. Given the numbers of people that we have that you want to capture, okay. given the number of population that we have in Nigeria, right. and if you look at it indirectly, that will to some extent also be a, a, a kind of um, overlap of some sort with some agencies like the National Population Commission. Okay. Because we are hearing, I don't know, we heard that they, they might likely have sensors or we might have sensors again. And if you have this ongoing, why not just integrate whatever you want to have with NIMS now? Because what we are seeing right now is a registration going on. Yeah, you might say it might not cover almost everybody. Well, that of um, National Population Commission is all encompassing. So what you will do is whatever number that NIMS have already captured, again, you will now integrate those data with what National Population Commission will have. Then the deficit is exactly what National Population will go for, and it means they will not necessarily shut down the economy, because yeah. that's exactly what's going to happen eventually when they say we should sit at home that they want to count you. So we know that beyond the human being, there are a lot of things that National Population also take care of, demographics, you know, they look at a lot of statistics, we understand that. Yeah. But they can actually gather those statistics from what names has already done. Okay, let's say uh, we have been focusing so much on the probably number of people that have been covered in, in, the, in this period and also the name, uh, using name and BVN to get data. Uh, the issue of insecurity is something that has been bedeviling the country. Are you worried that there's no uh, this deliberate effort to ensure that those who are not truly Nigerians are not captured uh, in these uh, exercises we're doing? How key is it? Uh, for background checks to be done before people are actually uh, giving that certification that yes, you're a Nigerian or yes, we've got your data? Um, honestly, at this point, with the kind of haphazard nature of how we operate things in this country, it will be extremely difficult for you to actually see through or fish out those who are foreigners or those who don't really belong to Nigeria. But there will also be an argument to want to say that there are those who have, you know, domiciled in Nigeria for a particular number of years. So, and some of them are even married and giving birth. So you cannot actually exclude those kind of people, you know, from Nigeria. Yes, that you can have that kind of argument that they actually qualify, you know, by the Consistent. by the fact that they are resi uh, resident in Nigeria. But then, because we didn't actually have any form of identity that is valid at some point not now that we have driver's license you know we have of course the bvn we have you know different kind of we have INEC registration and all that but the truth is at least with this step we will be able to manage some of some sort those who we feel are truly nigerians mm -hmm. whether by um, bath or whether by residence or by any other means you know that we want to look at it from but uh, most, uh, most importantly is the fact that we are capturing this data and let's hope that this data is actually genuine and it is also clean enough for us to use to make analysis. All right, uh, uh, well said. All right, all right. Go, moving to the next uh, talking point, it says uh, NASU. Yes, the NASU opposes reopening of uh, universities and unveils their next move uh, today. All right, uh, let's look at uh, the non-academic staff, you know, of educational and association institutions saying that the government have has not uh, provided the needed uh, PPEs and equipment uh, to tackle COVID-19 while reopening tertiary institutions. Uh, is this not uh, uh, in, is like different from what we've heard before now, where the Minister of uh, Education, Adamu Adamu, and other relevant uh, COVID-19 protocol uh, agencies haven't said, yes, the schools are ready to go. But with, with what Nasu is saying, uh, what do you think is well, uh, likely to face? You see, we are actually not as clear from having this kind of argument. And the truth is, um, if you look at how we have actually done things, even in the outside society, apart from the school environment, where they have said we should go back to work, you know, we should take 
um, measures, uh, taking, uh, taking care of certain yeah, measures, measures yeah. and keeping, you know, in, in touch with the, 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 the protocols that has been established. You see that even we Nigerians are not, you know, adhering strictly mm -hmm. to those measures. So I also, to some extent, sympathize with the government. Why? Right. Because, one, Nigeria is so big, the population is much, even if you deploy all the security apparatus today we have, if you deploy them one after the other to go to the street, we will still not have cap capable hands okay. you know, to ensure that these safety protocols are being adhered to. And that takes us back now to those other security outfits that you know, we are supposed to have given a, a, a nudge when the National Assembly turned on the Peace Corps, you know, Marshall, at some point in time. These are, you know, the people who would have at least, to some extent, look, you know, into, uh, 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 help us, rather, to look into this uh, uh, set of people or uh, institutions who are not adhering to the uh, COVID protocol. But for institutions, it's very sensitive because you have a um, student going to social interact, Okay. You have students living in the same hostel. You have students interacting in the school environment. Go to the library. Go to almost everywhere, the cafeterias and all that. So you cannot, at some point, actually observe that physical distancing okay. or social distancing, if we want to be honest with ourselves. You will hear some um, institutions saying that they will allow the first year student and the final year student you know, to resume first. After that, other students can now come in. The truth is, at some point in time, we are still going to have all these people, you know, in the university. So maybe can't the universities or the higher institutions be proactive in the school fees that these students are going to okay, pay? All right. Can you bury some little amount of money there so that you can carry out tests before you enter so the school like premises? Say, yeah. So. so when you gather this money via school fees. You will be able to gather those things. You will be able to also buy. You will ordinarily rely on federal government to provide all these facilities. Well, are you, you. Uh, worried that uh, some schools might, uh, you know, take advantage of this and go overboard? No, you see, that's exactly why we have NUC. That's exactly why we have um, the Ministry well, the, the of NUC Education. The NUC has been speaking uh, all this while. We've not really had the NUC come out to say uh, this way or that way. Yes, you see. When we have um, a body that is being chaired by government, that is being, you know, oscillated by government, when I say oscillated, you know, they are being funded okay. by government, you sort of have this kind of, you know, divergent um, views or rather a last, like a classical attitude, you know, okay, approach yeah. towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, approaching things. So, for, for me, I, I just feel we will continue to lament on the state of how institutions are supposed to respond you know, to I will live up to their responsibilities. Responsibility. Sure. But at the end of the day, we should also have it at the back of our mind that our safety comes first yes. okay. and our health comes first. So let the vice chancellor, who is the number one citizen in the institution, or the provosts, or the rectors in some of these higher institutions, take this initiative of integrating what I said earlier by ensuring that, one, all students, they carry out those tests yes. for them okay. before they come in. But you know, some people want to argue that all, there are some schools that they don't even have hostels. There are some schools where you know, they still need to go and interact with people outside so the school environment yeah. and all that. So how do you check that even after you've carried out these tests? Yes. So it's a bit complicated. It's just that if each and every one of us is doing the right thing, you wear your face masks, you know, you wash your hands, you observe social distancing, you know, when you want to cough, you use your elbow okay. and all that. So these are all the things I think we can do, you know, to ensure we are able to curtail, you know, the virus. All right, uh, let's uh, go to the next uh, talking point. Uh, we've got uh, the issue of protests uh, brewing in Lagos as a uh, judicial uh, panel hands over lucky toll gate. All right, uh, hundreds of uh, Nigerians have taken to the social media to speak uh, against the handover of the lucky toll gate where Nigerian uh, armed forces uh, opened fire on and on um, the protesters last October. Uh, the, the, at this point where it's been handed over, do you think this is technically saying the matter is being closed or uh, what are expectations? Uh, some quarters are saying youths might rise up again if at the end after this handover nothing is done. Yes, um, just like you, you've seen, there's been um, a mobilization of some sort on social media, and that's actually the platform they used before, you know, to start uh, the protest. The protest, yes. You know, we experience. Uh, we don't pray to actually experience such again, 
because of the fear of being of it being hijacked just like we saw again you know where they said hoodlum yes. or thugs yes. you know hijacked the process and we saw what you know happened thereafter one thing i want to say is that they should um be very sensitive most especially with how they handle issues and they should also be able to read the course of the youths because what i was thinking they are going to do is let them identify the family of those that they said actually were affected yes. at that point but we've not heard the families actually come out that is why the government is saying that you know the, the, there's a whole hula baloo about whether people died yeah, or not, not because the family actually came out came to, out to say that exactly case. so nobody has actually come out so, so at some point yeah you might want to say yes there were shootings but there were no killings. There were, there were, so were there really killings. Was fake news. Can we, can we tell me that? It's, it's, you know, that was exactly what um, Thomas Gunner was trying to say, that yeah, we should be careful at some point that some of these videos are being doctored. And up until now, we've not actually seen any family member or the families of those who are affected coming out to say that they have um, their child, you know, died, you know, uh, who was killed during this, you know, shootout. So, but then, let's, let's hope that the, 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 the Lagos state government is going to handle this issue very, very carefully and let them also integrate those youths or those that they feel are stakeholders in this you know, voice oh to come together and say whatever their demands are oh, okay. and let them also be able to produce you know, evidence of some, of some sort if they feel you, okay. anybody are actually affected and they should come and tell us what exactly they want so that everybody will be happy at the end of the day and the issue will be resolved amicably all right uh, let's go to the next uh, talking point uh, you in case you're just joining us you're watching uh, beyond the headlines on liberty television and isali shatter is my guest uh, he's been doing a great job doing analysis of all the big stories uh, we're looking at today all right the next talking point uh, comes from Ekiti state where the Ekiti state government has sued the inspector general of police mohammed adamu for uh, seeking an order of the court uh, to declare section 127 of the police act and regulations uh, which uh, provides for the discharge from the police force female officers who become pregnant while married on officially all right uh, let's look at this issue uh, lots of Nigerians uh, raised eyebrow when the inspector general of police uh, you know okay this sack of a a female police officer who got pregnant without being married. Uh, the, the, some said the big question is... Is it without uh, being married? Yeah, it says unofficially married. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> it means not being married okay. officially. <laughs> okay. So uh, the question is, is the police force supposed to be a moral uh, entity? Is this supposed to be a church uh, to check who is moral or not? If also put into consideration that the Na National Bureau of Statistics labeled the Nigerian police as... Uh, the most corrupt uh, agency in Nigeria. So what gives them the moral right to say a woman, uh, because she's pregnant, gets sacked? Uh, how interesting is this panning out? And uh, would you say kudos to the Kitty State government? Yeah, you see, this is a very, very sensitive issue. Sensitive in the sense that... It's very sensitive in the sense that, you see, um, the, you have these are regulations. And True. before you enrolled, you know, into Between that Nigerian, Nigerian police, police force, yep. you know, you would have read the terms and condition, and you already know because I know for sure that they said you cannot give birth after two years that you are, you are in the service, the service. and okay. you cannot give birth after three years that you married. So if you have that law already okay. on okay. ground. So if she and they said I only was just less than a year after she finished training, okay. you know, that she got pregnant. So if she had actually gone against the uh, rules uh, of engagement and she already knows what the rules are, she signed those rules herself, okay. you know, she will definitely, you know, face what she faced. Okay. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I might be sounding a bit harsh, but that is what the law says because she signed it. So let me now give you an example. Imagine that the 300 soldiers that were deployed so to Abuja, Kaduna Road, all of them decide to get pregnant uh, at, at the same time. So who are you really going to deploy? So yeah. that's why I said it's a bit sensitive. Okay. I, like, I like that analysis. Yeah. What yeah. if the 300 get, are you going to sack the 300 uh, officers? No, of course, you know, they will do that. Ah, so, 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 so uh, there's an argument to say, 
the, the military are a bit disciplined, okay. Okay. you know, at some point. More disciplined than the police. Yes, okay. there, there's, that, there's that argument. Right. They will not do that. All right, the next talking yeah. point, uh, while we were talking, uh, someone uh, did raise an issue concerning the Nigerian police, say, this Omobola, yes, that's her name, uh, Ms. Ola Jide Omobola, yeah. uh, Omolola, sorry, yeah. uh, Constable uh, Ms. Ola Jide Omolola, yeah. that the issue was that allegedly that mm -hmm. it was one of the top police officers that probably had something to do with it and as a way of uh, for not playing ball or going against some other persons who wanted uh, something be behind the scene led to her being you know, sacked because uh, uh, I was trying to say that uh, in Nigeria police force she's the only one who has gotten you know pregnant unofficially because what they hinged on was that uh, unofficially got married. That was why she was kicked out, and not necessarily because she, she flouted section 127 of the police uh, laws. Yeah, but you see, so can we look at the possibility of that playing out? Yeah, you see, you will definitely have some controversial yeah, statements yeah. that will come with this kind of thing. That's why I timed it sensitive, you yeah. know, right from the outset. All right. And it, it will be laws that I've read out, you know, the, 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 the stipulated laws. laws yeah. You know, if she had actually gone against those laws, you know, whether there is a personal or an emotional, you know, issue related to it. Or a blackmail. Or a blackmail or so. So the body fact is, has she actually flirted the law? If she has, then uh, there's nothing you can do. But if you have the argument... For the, the state government... Yeah, team, yeah that's, about, that's, that, that's exactly what I'm about to say. To say that. If you have that argument to say that there's a foul play somewhere and they have decided to go ahead to sue them, I feel that they should do a very investigative work so that okay. we know exactly what transpired. And at the end of the day, if she's actually innocent, I am praying that she gets um, a good judgment. But having said that, let's even look at the law itself. Because yeah, we clamor for equality, yeah, you know, and also inequality, of our e exactly. So we have female House of Rep members, we have female senators. I feel at this point in time, they should be looking at this law right now to see how they can actually tweak it. Because you know, it seems against the, the female gender. So it seems. But maybe when they sit down together and rub heads, because we don't actually, there was a reason why they did that. Maybe because they feel you are just coming in, so you are learning the rules, so they want you to have acclimatize with the system, you know, before you actually get pregnant. Because the truth is, there are some people who you cannot predict when they get pregnant, yeah, when so they get married. That, so that that's why I said it's a bit sensitive because if, for instance, God forbid, but maybe in our entire um, family, oh, yeah. you know, nobody has given birth okay. when, they, when they got married. And she got married, she got pregnant. You can't fault her for getting married, for, uh, for, sorry, it's for it's getting pregnant, pregnant, for crying out loud. That's why I said it's a bit sensitive. So I want, at this point, let, you know, the female senators, the female House of Red members, human rights activists, let them look at these laws and see how they can tweak it to actually accommodate the you know, women more. All right, and this is not always talking about equality for all. All right, uh, uh, but uh, just to add uh, to it, uh, would you say the Nigerian police probably uh, they are always big on small things and small on big things? Uh, because now we are looking at this uh, because she floated, uh, she got pregnant on the officially because that was their statement. Uh, why hasn't the Nigerian police sacked police officers for collecting bribe for for collecting uh, you know money when they say bail is free? And Bay has never been free for as long as I can remember. Why is the Nigerian police not doing this kind of things? Let's hear them go hard on such like this and not on trivia or uh, moral grounds. Yeah, the truth is, um, there are actually people who have been sacked. Based on, uh, I, I'm aware of some, okay. especially in like two IGs, you know, that have passed. I know that there are those who were caught actually in the act collecting bribe. They set up, there's this uh, special force that they set up. Okay. They're also police officers. If they catch you at checkpoints, you know, collecting bribe, they are sacked. But, you know, they don't come out to say it because they don't like speaking about it because they don't want to demoralize, you know, others who are already in the system. Okay. But those within the system already, already know that this is uh, actually the measure that have been taken you know, on these um, defaulting officers. All right, I will go for a very quick uh, break. When we come up from the break, Beyond the Headlines would we'll definitely continue. I've got Issa Ali Shatter, uh, ex-editor uh, of uh, National Frontier newspaper, and uh, thank you very much. He's been doing a very massive job analyzing all the big stories. We'll go for a quick break. Stay with us. When we come back, we've got more exciting stories we want to chew on.
Right, uh, welcome back from the break. You're watching Beyond the Headlines on Liberty Television, Nigeria's finest press review show where we look at big stories uh, making the rounds from uh, national dailies and also trending issues. Uh, my guest on today's uh, edition is uh, Issa Lee Shatter. He's been amazing uh, doing analysis. Issa, let's go to the next talking point. Uh, we've got a cryptocurrency <laughs> uh, ban to protect banks, youths says the CBN. How true is this? Uh, it's, uh, yes, you're in the money market, also in mo mobile money export. Uh, cryptocurrency is a, is a world phenomenon. Do you think the CBN uh, was right or thought it was doing the needful when it said it, it placed a ban on banks uh, from operating cryptocurrency accounts uh, when they know that this is next to not, uh, it cannot be caged per se? Yeah, well, at this point they are right. But why are they going wrong? forward, they why might be they, Why are they wrong? I will analyze it. At this point, they are right, but going forward, they might be wrong. Oh, boy. Yes. That's a tricky one. Exactly. You see, there was um, a course I did okay. um, for digital financial practitioners. All right. And the um, majority of those who were on the course, the, the particular course I picked, which was on cryptocurrency. What's the name? Can you remember? The, the cryptocurrency. Okay. okay. That's, this, that's the module. The module. Yeah, yeah, cryptocurrency. Most of the students that we were, we were together with were CBN staff of other nations. Other nations? Other nations. Outside Nigeria. Outside Nigeria, yes. Right. It's an international course. Oh, African continent? Africa, Europe, and um, uh, um, Asia. Asia. All right. Yes. All the, all the continents that you know, were, were represented. Board. Yes. So, now, cryptocurrency, yes, is a virtual... Uh, means of transacting, just like we have the normal transaction we are doing now. And if you look at the evolution of money, money at the point was quantified with stones, rock, before we had the Chinese evolution that we started using the paper transaction, there was trade by butter and the rest. Then we had the, the cowries, the, cowries the, the silvers, the gold. And before you know it, we now metamorphosized into real currency right. that we are using. From the real currency, we now move into e-currency. Right. Now that we have moved into e-currency, cryptocurrency too are coming as a form of value attached to money. Okay. And it's like a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. All right. But you have you know, this value of a data that people use, you know, like graphs and all that. It represents a symbol yeah. that people have trust with and they trade with it. it. Now, the point is, Nigerians are very smart. The Yahoo boys are not using cryptocurrency to cash out uh. because it can never be traced. And but how did they do counter that? Are, are, are you saying when any money that any money that 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 comes in, okay. they layer it through cryptocurrency. All right. Now when they layer it into cryptocurrency, it's more like a, the money laundering kind of exactly, stuff. exactly. So you have dangers of money laundering, you have um, counter-terrorism, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy way to actually fund terror, terrorism. terrorism. Sure. You understand? So, but what, why I gave an analysis of all the CBN staff of okay. other nations that came, you know, that came on, this, on, the, on the course for cryptocurrency, was because, well, that's the reason why I said, in the long run, they might be wrong, because cryptocurrency is the future. C cryptocurrency is what we are looking at. So what I would ordinarily want CBN to have done is to say, okay, we have placed a temporary ban on cryptocurrency. All right. Or we have suspended it for now because um, Stock Exchange Commission, Security and Services, they it's recognize it. it. Yes. So it means... That's SEC now. Yes, SEC recognizes it. So there is, you know, a, 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 dis a disconnect between mm -hmm. CBN, yeah. who is a regulator, and, of course, SEC uh, on, on the other hand. hand. So, but why I said in the long run, it's going to be um, more of a danger to us is whether you like it or not, you cannot disrupt the process. S uh, cryptocurrency has come to change the narrative in the ecosystem so of transactions. It's here to stay. You cannot run away from it. So, what I feel the CBN should be doing right now is to bring out or train most of their staff, especially with the ICT department, to ensure that we come up with a robust platform for red tech, registration technology, okay. to ensure that they understand what cryptocurrency means and they regulate the process. Okay. Now, every transaction that's going to happen within the space of Nigeria should happen with CBN having a bird eye view yeah. into it. So it gives us a very formidable platform 
to actually have recourse. It is what is going to uh, also engage a lot of youths. It is what we, are, we also create a lot of employment opportunity. But again, the Nigerian economy has been a service-driven economy rather than a production-driven economy. Mm. All right. Uh, before we go for a quick break, uh, uh, we, we, we had a statement signed by the Acting Director of Corporate uh, Communications, Osita Wabi. Wani Sobi, uh, who noted that the directive was not the first time uh, the CBM was given such a directive. In 2017, it also had such directives on banks. The fact that they did it in 2017, and uh, fast forward four years later, we are still having it. Does it mean the directive was not adhered to, or the directive had a timeline, or it, it goes to say what you're saying, that uh, cryptocurrency is here to stay and the CBN. So why would the CBN be going on a goose chase if that's the case. Yeah, that's why I, I gave my analysis that is all encompassing. You see, with the introduction of fintechs, financial technology companies, you cannot actually disrupt, you can, sorry, you cannot actually stop that process because there's a disruption that have happened. And almost every investor have recognized that Nigeria is the next big thing as regards fintech. That's the reason why you saw that this stock was bought with $200 million. That's a very amazing... Yeah, it deal. means Nigeria has a very huge, huge market, market, you know, for financial products in Nigeria. And we have still not covered at least 50% of the market share that okay. we have. All right, uh, that's good news uh, for us business uh, gurus. Uh, just to not even cover 50%, so there's still more to do. Yeah. Uh, but the good, big question is, uh, if the CBN is right now and wrong later, is that good enough for Nigeria? Let's go for a quick break. We will return beyond the headlines. Would continue and definitely more buzz to come.